Namaskar my dear students. Today in the dental material section, we will be discussing a very important topic that is dental ceramics. You know, dental ceramics is one of the promising restorative material that we are using for crown and bridges. To start with, as this is a long topic, so I will be discussing the basics and the classification system along with the properties of dental ceramics in this video. So let's begin. So first of all, let us talk about the term ceramic. You know, this word ceramic is derived from a term which is called as keramos. In Greek, this term keramos means a potter or a pottery. Okay, and if we just relate it with the older Sanskrit meaning, it means to burn. Now we come to the introduction of ceramics in dentistry. Ceramics were first introduced in dentistry in 1774 by a French pharmacist, Alexis Dutach. The first porcelain tooth material, okay, that was first patented in 1789 by a French dentist, D. Chimant. Now next, let us be familiar with two important terms that we will be using. One is ceramic and the other is porcelain. Okay, what are ceramic? Ceramics are the non-metallic inorganic structures primarily containing the compounds of oxygen with one or more metallic or semi-metallic elements like aluminium, calcium, lithium, magnesium, phosphorus, potassium, silicon, sodium, zirconium and titanium. And the second term is porcelain. Porcelain refers to a family of ceramic materials. Okay, so this is from the ceramic only, which are composed essentially of. Now, what is the difference that they contain kaolin, quartz and feldspar. Also, they are fired at high temperature. So, now we conclude that all porcelain and glass ceramics, they are ceramics, but not all ceramics are porcelain or glass ceramics. Now next we come to the classification of the dental ceramics. Dental ceramics can be classified on the basis of melting point or the firing temperature, second based on the composition, third based on the laboratory processing and fourth is the utilization or the function of the dental ceramics. So let us discuss them one by one. According to the melting point or the firing temperature or the fusion temperature, the dental ceramics can be classified as high fusing, medium fusing, low fusing and the ultra low fusing. The high fusing ceramics, they have a temperature range of more than 1300 degrees Celsius and they are basically used to make the denture teeth. The medium fusing, they have a temperature range from 1000 to 1300 degrees Celsius and they are mainly used to fabricate the jacket crowns, bridges, inlays. Then comes the low fusing dental ceramics. The temperature ranges between 850 to 1100 degrees Celsius. They are basically used to make the veneers over the cast metal crowns. And last are the ultra low fusing with a fusion temperature less than 850 degrees Celsius. They are basically used with titanium and its alloy. The second classification is based on composition. On this basis, the dental ceramics can be divided into three categories. First are the oxide ceramics, second are the silicate ceramics and third are the resin matrix ceramics. The oxide ceramics, they are basically the oxides of aluminum and zirconia and they mainly contain the compounds like oxygen, carbon or nitrogen. These oxide ceramics, they have high melting point, they have low wear resistance. That is why they are enough strong, but they are not aesthetic. Okay, now in this we have the zirconium oxide, the aluminum oxide. Coming to the second category, the silicate ceramics. The silicate ceramics mainly contain uh, the silicon and the oxygen. 
okay they are not uh, enough strong they are mainly aesthetic so they are used as veneering ceramics okay now we have lithium silicate ceramics lucite reinforced glass ceramics the third category is the resin matrix ceramics in this we have the resin based ceramics and the hybrid ceramics The next classification of dental ceramics is based on the laboratory processing. In this, we have five uh, type of ceramics. First, which are formed by sintering. Second, casting. Third, heat pressed. Fourth, glass infiltration. And fifth is the CAD cam. Now, coming to the first, sintering. From the name itself, sintering is a method for making the objects from a powder by heating the material below its melting point until the material, they adhere to each other, they fuse to each other. Okay, so that is sintering. Sintering is basically done in the oven under vacuum. Okay, now we need a base material for uh, heating the ceramic. So we can either use a metal coping, a platinum foil or a hydrothermal glass. The second is the uh, casting. Uh, from the word itself, we know what is casting. Casting is the process in which the material is introduced into a mold where, while it is liquid and then it is allowed to solidify. In this, the first the wax pattern is formed, the casting of the melted glass ceramic is done into the mold and then the ceramization or the crystallization of the casted framework takes place. Now, example of the casting uh, ceramics are diker. Okay, the main advantage is that, that it can be machined and shaped just like a metal. Okay, the third process is heat pressed. Heat pressed ceramic technology, it produces very precise crowns by eliminating the shrinkage porosity. Now, how it does, there are the precision wax up. It is duplicated in the ceramic. You know, there are consistent pre-blended ceramic ingots, which are pressed, okay, to form the desirable shape. Now, third comes the glass infiltration. Glass infiltration is mainly done for the oxide type of ceramics. In this, a porous crystalline slip is formed by fusion of the metallic particles at high temperature. Then a glass coat is fused over this porous slip to infiltrate into the pores. Okay, that was porous. So this will infiltrate into the pores and then strengthen the structure. That is why it is called as infiltrated glass ceramics. Okay, then over this the veneering porcelain is done. Now, uh, examples of this glass infiltration ceramics are Inserum alumina, Inserum spinel, Inserum zirconia. Last is the CAD cam. Now, this is a very, very important recent technology which is used. CAD cam means computer aided design and computer aided machining. What is there in this? First, the manufacture of the model is done. The model is prepared from a high quality, dimensionally stable and scannable plaster. Then the scanning of the model is done. Okay. Third, designing of the framework is done in the CAD unit, that is computer aided designing unit. And based on this design, the milling is done in the CAM unit. So thus we obtain the milled framework. Okay, the desirable shape that we need. Next classification is based on utilization or function of the ceramic. In this first is the core ceramic. It supports and reinforces the restoration. If we see this picture, the all ceramic crown, it contains a core and the veneer over it. Okay, so these are the core ceramics. Second are the opaque ceramics. Now, if we see the metal ceramic crown, there is a metal frame we can see. Over that, the opaquer is added. What is the function of opaquer? It will mask and hide the metal. Okay. Third are the veneering ceramics. Okay. The, these veneering ceramics can be the body ceramic, which simulates the dentine uh, part of the natural teeth. Then the incisal ceramic. This is the incisal ceramic. It will uh, simulate the enamel of the natural teeth. Gingival ceramic. These are darker ceramics. It simulates the darker gingival portion. 
Then the transparent, transparent ceramics we can see just below the uh, incisor ceramics. Uh, this will simulate the uh, translucent incisal enamel which is present in the natural teeth. Okay, now coming to the next which are the stains. What does the stains do? You must have seen brown staining or white lines on the natural teeth. To simulate those stains, these are used to color the ceramics to improve the aesthetics. And fifth are the glaze. Glaze is the surface glaze. It imparts the smooth glossy surface to the restoration. So this is based on the utilization. Next is the composition of dental porcelain. Very, very important. It is often asked in multiple choice question. In long note also, you will have to write down the composition and it is uh, asked in Viva also. The first and the main constituent of dental porcelain is feldspar. It is present in 60 to 80 percent. It is a naturally occurring mineral. It is the basic glass former. It is the double silicate of potassium and aluminium. It is also known as albite. Now, how it is the basic glass former? When it is mixed with a metal oxide and fired at high temperature, it can form a glass phase that is able to soften and flow slightly. Second is the cowling. It is present in 3 to 5 percent. Okay, it is the basic binder in dental porcelain. It is a white clay-like material, hydrated aluminum silicate and it acts as a binder which also gives opacity to the mass. Third is the quartz. Quartz is a form of silica. It is the filler in dental porcelain. It is present in 15 to 25 percent. Silica, it acts as a refractory skeleton and thus it provides strength and hardness to the porcelain during fusing. Fourth is aluminum. Alumina. Alumina is aluminum oxide. It is present in 8 to 20 percent. It is the flux. Okay, how? It alters the softening point and increases the viscosity of porcelain during firing. It also gives strength and opacity to the porcelain. Next are the oxides. Oxides are present in 9 to 15 percent. They are the basic fluxes and the glass modifiers. Oxides of sodium, potassium and calcium are used. How they act as glass modifier or flux? They lower the fusion temperature okay, and increase the viscosity of porcelain during firing. Thus, they control the flow. But the concentration of these fluxes are very important. If the concentration is increased, then what will happen? It reduces the chemical durability of the glass. So the, it has to be balanced. Next are the pigments. You know, these are the coloring friends. Less than 1% they are present. Mainly oxides of tin, nickel, cobalt, titanium, iron or gold are used. They give different shades. Okay, this is how we do the shade matching with the natural teeth. Next are the opacifiers. They are present in traces. They are basically the oxides of zirconium titanium and tin, they increase the opacity of the dental porcelain. Now let us talk about some tinting agents which give some colored tints. Iron or nickel oxide, they give a brown colored stain. Copper oxide for the green tint. Titanium, yellowish brown. Manganese oxide which gives a lavender tint. And cobalt blue. Uh, cobalt gives the bluish shade. So this helps in simulating with the natural teeth. Okay. And these are often asked in multiple choice question also. Next are the properties of fused porcelain. First property that we will be discussing is strength. You know the previous, the early porcelain, they were weak and they were brittle. They tended to break easily. But the current porcelain systems have considerably improved in strength and toughness. So if we talk about the flexural strength, flexural strength is the combination of compressive tensile as well as the shear strength. This may vary from 70 megapascals for feldspathic veneering porcelain. Okay, the veneering porcelain which are used, the porcelain fused to metal ceramics which are used to 1200 megapascals for the zirconia core, the core ceramics which are used. Okay, so there is a wide range. 
then the glazed porcelain is stronger than the ground porcelain okay now coming to the tensile strength we know that porcelains are brittle materials so the tensile strength will be low okay next is the shear strength shear strength will be again low due to the lack of ductility and caused by the complex structure of the porcelain factors affecting the strength so first is the composition we all just uh, saw that the coarse ceramics they have much greater strength as compared to the veneering strength veneer ceramics so this depends on the composition second is the surface integrity you know the cracks and the porosities if they are present any surface imperfections if they are present they will reduce the strength okay now uh, the improper condensation again the poor condensation uh, condensation it will introduce voids and it will reduce the density of the porcelain so again the strength will be decreased then firing procedure if there is inadequate firing or over firing that will also weaken the structure next are the strengthening of the ceramics very important this is often asked as a separate short note in the theory exam and it is often asked in the viva also so two things can be considered when we are doing the strengthening of the ceramics either we can strengthen the brittle materials okay make some changes in the brittle materials or in the designing components now for strengthening again we have two ways first is we can develop some residual compressive stresses you know within the surface of the material so that will help in strengthening and this can be done either by a chemical binding what is chemical binding this is basically the ion exchange process two ions are used here we know that the potassium ions they are 35% larger than the sodium ions so if we squeeze the potassium ions in place of the sodium ions what will happen the compressive stresses are created and this leads to the greater toughening of the glass second is the thermal tempering thermal tempering includes by rapidly cooling the surface of the object while it is still hot or in the molten state okay so this will create the compressive stresses within the outer portion and strengthen it third is the thermal compatibility thermal compatibility is creating a difference in the coefficient of thermal expansion the inner layer is uh, made slightly with a slightly higher coefficient of thermal expansion than the outer layer so on cooling what will happen again there will be uh, residual stresses okay and this will strengthen the glass now next is interruption of the crack propagation this can be done by two methods first is dispersion of the crystalline faces okay this crystalline material is dispersed within the ceramic which interrupts with the formation of crack okay so the crack cannot pass through this crystalline phase okay most glass based ceramics they use dispersion strengthening for example lithia disilicate okay uh, this is often asked in the uh, mcqs also spinel zirconia they the strengthening is done by dispersion of the crystalline phases second is transformation toughening this is basically associated with the yttria stabilized zirconia core ceramics what how it is done it is basically involves the stress induced transformation of the material from the name itself transformation of the material at the tip of the crack okay so what will happen when the tip of uh, when the area of the tip of the crack will be transformed under compression it will halt or stop the progress of the crack does it will strengthen the ceramic next is in the designing components we can minimize the stresses stress concentration how we can do by giving a sufficient thickness of the ceramic 2 mm of thickness avoiding any sharp internal line angles point angles then giving a proper glaze or polishing okay uh, avoiding any kind of defects or stresses you know proper manipulation and fabrication technique to minimize the stress concentration and second is minimizing the tensile stresses so this is how we carry on with the strengthening of the 
ceramics. Moving to the other properties of the fused porcelain, uh, first we have the modulus of elasticity. Porcelain has high stiffness with a modulus of elasticity around 69 GPA. Second is the surface hardness. Porcelain is much harder than the natural teeth. It can wear the natural teeth. Okay, coming to the wear resistance, again, as we just discussed that it is more resistant to wear than the natural teeth because of the greater surface hardness. Thermal properties. Porcelain has low thermal conductivity. So it is safe to use on the vital teeth. Okay, coefficient of thermal expansion, which is around 6.4 to 7.8 into 10 raised to the power minus 6. It is close to that of the natural teeth. The next property is specific gravity. You know the true specific gravity of the porcelain is around 2.42 uh, and the uh, specific gravity of the fired porcelain is usually less 2.2 to 2.3 that is the range you know because of the presence of the air voids during the manipulation. Chemical stability it is insoluble impermeable to oral fluids Okay, so the fired porcelain is uh, chemically stable. The hydrofluoric acid, it causes the etching of the porcelain. You know, when we have to etch the porcelain for uh, putting the brackets on the uh, ceramic crown, we use hydrofluoric acid. Okay. The next are the aesthetic properties. The aesthetic qualities of porcelain are excellent. Okay, the all ceramic crown gives much, much better aesthetics as compared to the metal ceramic crown. You know, the porcelain, it is able to match with the adjacent tooth structure in translucency, color and intensity. It also provides the lifelike appearance. So porcelain is much favored material, either on metal or the all ceramic crown. Then comes the biocompatibility, excellent biocompatibility with the oral tissues. So that's all for this uh, lecture today. I'm sure all the classification systems, the composition and the strengthening system along with the properties. N now you don't have any doubts for the porcelains which are used in the porcelain fused to metal. We'll be discussing in the next video. So stay tuned and keep watching. Please like and share the video with your friends and your juniors. If you have any topics that I should uh, take in the next video, uh, you can give in the comment box. Subscribe the channel if you have not yet sub subscribed. Wish you success today and always.